All right, Shalom, Makim, Shalom. Hey, y'all, Bashim al Shai, Brokatham. To my dear brothers out there, you little man and sisters, worshiping the Heavenly Father in spirit and in truth. Our praises to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, and Dabar, to the elder apostles of the Great Millstone. All right, welcome back to another current events prophecy and madness. And the subtitle of this one's going to be Esau's the Devil. Who is Esau? Well, the descendants of Esau, also known as Edom, Esau Edom, is a self proclaimed white people today. And we're going to show you how this dude is just the devil through his actions. And as you know, we are already in the third quarter of the year. We are already up in uh, July. You know what I mean? Time is flying by. Salvation draw off near. And the wickedness is being exposed. Matter of fact, let's see what we have here first. Cued up. For what had been built. Hey, Sleepo, while you were distracted by a submarine and a woman abuser, did you know that J.P. Morgan Chase and BlackRock basically bought the Ukraine? BlackRock is in charge of the fund to rebuild the war-torn country, which means they own it. The same BlackRock that owns all the companies that make all your foods. The same BlackRock that owns every TV station that you watch. The same BlackRock that owns all the pharmaceutical, defense, and mainstream media outlets. Yeah, those guys. The same BlackRock that owns the controlling share of pretty much every major company traded on the stock market just basically purchased the Ukraine. Who owns BlackRock? The Vanguard Group owns the most shares of BlackRock. Well, who owns Vanguard? BlackRock owns Vanguard. Nice little loop they got there, huh? Now, th this is a very important video. This is crucial. So like Jake started it off, while people was distracted by the submarine, and then Jake socking the lady over the chicken in the store, BlackRock and JP Morgan um, putting banks over there in the Ukraine to fund all the damage that's been occurring over the, uh, you know, the Ukrainian war or whatever. So basically now they own them or they got a foot over there in the Middle East through you through the Ukraine with a bank. And this is Esau Edom, the self proclaimed white man, the devil putting his basically putting his brand or his his footprint that his marker that this is his territory. This is mine. So now he's he's put a bank over there and we know that this devil, that's how he gets down. He controls you over him having um, control over the money. Just like that, that, that one devil said, give me control of a nation's money. I care not who make the laws because whoever controls the money is going to control all the resources anyway. You see? And then he looped it around and showed you that... Um, Vanguard got the most shares in BlackRock. And who owns Vanguard? BlackRock do. So they got a little, like he said, a little loop. A little loop going right there. And Vanguard owns everything. So these devils think they they think they they think they playing chess. They think they smart. You know, which they they ain't smarter than how the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashman Al Shai. Matter of fact, this is um I looked up the word black. I looked up BlackRock. I just said define BlackRock. It says BlackRock Incorporate is an American multinational investment company based in New York City. Founded in 1988, initially as an enterprise risk management. Founders Robert S. Capito and Larry Fink. Net income is $5.18 billion in 2022. You see? So, so these, these are these are nothing but 1948 or small hats, and they making moves and, and they gaining. They're trying to gain more control over everything. This is Habakkuk two and five. It says, "Yea, also because he transgressed by wine, he is a proud man. Neither keepeth that home, who enlargeth his desire as hell and is as death. It cannot be satisfied, but gather unto him all nations and heapeth unto him all people." We know that this Edomite, the self-proclaimed white man, he has a God complex. He wants to be in control of everything. So that was a that's crazy that this dude now put a bank over there in Ukraine and, and funded them through 
the damages of the war. Let's see what we got here next. Black Rock. I don't think we'll ever get to the 2024 election. I think things are going to implode in Washington before then. I think our economic financial condition is fragile. It's going to come home to roost in ugly ways. I, I will tell you, I don't know exactly how it will happen. I think we're going to end up in a situation where we find out the banks are closed for two or three weeks and nobody can get into them. You think so? I think we're going to run into something like that, yeah. I also think that the levels of violence and criminality in our cities is so high that it, it's going to spill over into other places in society. P people that normally think they can live remote from the problem are now beginning to be touched by the problem. Then I look at this thing in Ukraine. I think Ukraine is going to lose catastrophically. It's going to be a complete collapse. And that, too, is going to have an effect here at home because people are going to say, well, wait a minute. Everybody told us Ukraine was winning. Everybody told us X, Y, and Z. I mean, sort of the, the Russian hoax on steroids. All of those things are going to come together or converge in some way that's going to prevent us from reaching, you know, the status quo, oh, another election, oh, another set of campaigns, and so forth. I don't think we'll ever get that. That's like music to my ears. Lord willing, we don't make it to the 2024 elections. But as you can see, this is a former U.S. Army corn, uh, um, former U.S. Army Colonel Douglas McGregor. And he says he doesn't think we're going to make it to the 24, 2024 elections. Lord willing. He's saying, and he's basing it off of what, what we see today, what we can see right now this second, which is that, that, that war going over there in Ukraine. He said we have a fragile uh, economic system. You know, he said the bank, he believed they're going to close the banks, which everybody is saying that. And when they close the banks, when they turn the banks back on, we have, we'll be under a new digital system. He said the violence is out the roof. It's very high. And now people that try to move to remote places, try to move far away, they're starting to be touched. Yeah, because this is judgment towards everybody. And this is the hand of the Heavenly Father. So Lord willing that we don't make it to the uh, 2024 elections, man. Do Esau, Edom, be the devil and do what you need to do so that the Heavenly Father can send his son, Yahweh Shai. This Jeremiah 15 and 23, it says, How was the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder and broken? How was Babylon become a desolation among the nations? So we know that one of the code names for America is Babylon because they do everything as the Babylonians did. And the Lord says, How is the whole hammer of the earth broken asunder? The Heavenly Father basically is, is, is ripping this place apart from the foundations, the morality. The, the finances and Esau believes that when you know everything collapses, everything goes under he's going to be the phoenix that rises from the ashes but sure enough he not he not counting on the Lord's son Yahweh Shai putting them and putting them down and keeping them down to the in the sides of the pit it says I have laid a snare for thee you see the Lord had laid a snare for this Edomite and thou art also taken O Babylon and thou was not aware thou art not thou are found and also caught because they have striven against the Lord. And this the reason why these Edomites ain't gonna be able to prevail is because Yahweh Bashimel Shai is going, he's fighting with the Lord. You see? So let, let, let's pray. Let, let's let us pray that you know, that it don't go to 2024. You know? Let's play this next thing here. You know, we under attack spiritually by demons. Okay, this place is given over. To the top demons on the left hand side peep this video i think things are going to after that then what happens is is the culture the next three demons show up the first is asmodeus he's the demon of homosexuality in men then there's the demon of leviathan which is the demon of homosexuality in men but of the masculine kind these are the women who are heavy on the heels we would say okay then there is the spirit of lilith which is the more seductive form of female homosexuality. After those, after those have gained ascendancy in a culture, which by the way, if you look at the cultures, every single culture is pushed in this direction. Okay. So, uh, historically, not just ours, but historically, this is always the progression. Once you have 
fornication, you end up with contraception, and then the upshot of that is uh, homosexuality and then abortion. Balfamet is the fifth one, and he's the demon of child sacrifice. Abortion. In our culture, think of this. They shot down the fornication laws, and so they delivered us into the hands of Baal. They sh then they had Roe versus Wade and delivered us into the hands of Balfamet. And then they allowed gay marriage. And so now our country politically is in the hold of the top five demons in hell other than Satan. They I'm going to play that again, this last portion of it. Listen to the, the situations we were facing, Roe versus Wade and et cetera and forth. But really behind the scenes, what they were doing was releasing demons, getting people to accept these demons. Let me play this last part. Abortion. In our culture, think of this. They shot down the fornication laws. And so they delivered us into the hands of Baal. They sh then they had Roe versus Wade and delivered us into the hands of Balfamet. And then they allowed gay marriage. And so now our country politically is in the hold of the top five demons in hell other than Satan. They delivered us into... After that... Man. United States of America and every all of its followers are delivered onto these top demons. This is true. And we're witnessing it. I'd even consider to myself that abortion goes back to Baphomet. It's a child sacrifice, and it's you could get it legally done in a, in 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 your local clinic. Well, that's a sacrifice of Baphomet. People don't even know they're sacrificing through abortion to Baphomet when they do such a thing. You know, and like he said, the first demon he said he said, uh, "Asmo D." I think he said Asmo D. I forgot how he pronounces. A little different. But that's this. It was basically that demon he first pronounced uh, in the beginning of the video. He says Asmo, As, Asmodeus. He called him Asmodeus. Asmodeus is nothing but Asmodeus. We call it Asmodeus. Potato, potato. Asmodeus is found in Tobit chapter three, verse seventeen. It says, "And Raphael was sent to heal them both. That is to scale away the whiteness of Tobit's eyes and to give Sarah, the daughter of Ruel." For a wife to Tobias, the son of Tobit, and the and to bind Asmodeus, the evil spirit, because she belonged to Tobias by right of her inheritance. See, so Asmodeus is found in the scriptures. He called him Asmodeus, you know, but he's found in the scriptures, and he's an evil spirit. And he said Asmodeus is a spirit of homosexuality. Lilith, another demon he named. It's a spirit of to get women to, to be lesbian. And Baphomet is the is the uh is the abortion. And they use Roe versus Wade. They shot down the fornication laws, like he said, and now we're giving it to the hand of these demons, and people don't even know that they're 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 worshiping Satan. And they're they're um they're um they're lining themselves up with these demons. Don't even know it. This is Isaiah 47 and 9. It says, But these two things shall come unto thee in a moment. In one day, the loss of children and widowhood. They shall come upon thee in their perfection for the multitude of thy sorceries and for great abundance of thy enchantments. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. Thou hast said, None seeth me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it hath perverted thee. And thou hast said in thy heart, I am and none else besides me. Therefore shall evil come upon thee. Thou should not know from whence it riseth, and mischief shall fall upon thee, and thou should not be able to put it off, and desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, and thou should not, and which thou should not know. So you Edomites, you doing all this wickedness behind the scenes, you tricking the people into worshiping Satan, but the Lord see everything, and you going you gonna experience a loss out of this world. So let's see what we have here next. You see, Esau is the Esau is the devil, okay. Just like the, the subtitles say, Esau is the devil, okay? Let's play this next thing we have here.
Biathan, which is the... This was seven months ago, before the Canadian wildfire. Stopping climate change. No. Now the White House says blocking the sun might be the answer, but what would mm. that look like? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Boy, Take it. I, I tell you, when I first started reading this article, it was like I just started diving in, and then it was like offshoot articles and this and that. So let's talk about this. On October 13th, the White House announced it was funding a five-year research plan with about uh, something called geoengineering, specifically solar radiation management to artificially modify the Earth's climate. This comes off some studies back in the 1800s. Bear with me here. In 1816, in April, mm -hmm. the Tambora volcano erupted in Indonesia with such force mm -hmm. that it resulted in something called the year without the summer. I'm not sure if you've ever heard that term before. No, I haven't. Back in 1816, the year without a summer, because after that volcanic eruption, the temperature of the Earth dropped 5.4 degrees. Okay. Yeah, there was a lot of loss of life. There was a lot of loss of crops and everything. But moving forward, what scientists did, they started to measure this and they said, wait a minute. So the particulates in the aerosols from volcanoes mm -hmm. actually blotted out the sun. So that's where this study is coming from. What they want to do <laughs> is basically block out the sun with, by spraying aerosols into the stratosphere to reflect sunlight just as, say, a volcano would do if a volcano was to erupt violently. So the United Nations is on board. They've recognized the potential of this, but there are so many critics that also say, wait a minute, time out. You could cause even more of a problem by experimenting with this. Seems like you've got a question. Go ahead. No, my, my question is, how do you study this okay. without doing it? So here, here's the way. It, it, they didn't go too much into the article about this except for this. Here's what's going to happen. And it, it, they'll start in a laboratory, obviously a, a laboratory. Sulfur dioxide, other particulates, things that come out of volcanoes. They're going to take those and they're going to try to find a way to block some of the sunlight out gets, and push it back out into space. Once they can do that in a controlled laboratory, my... I would expect them to try it somewhere on this earth away from everybody just to kind of see what it's doing to the reflectivity of the sunshine. To be honest with you, though, here are some of the potential problems you could have. What if it works and you have a button and you can press these aerosols to come and go? What if you dip the temperatures too low? Things die. What if it intensifies weather events and unforeseen consequence? There are so many different things. Also geoengineering they've shown on studies it also helps spread diseases so there are a potential a lot of negative impacts to putting these aerosols up in the stratosphere but i let it i let it finish right there because he he's he said a lot already yeah i you know us brethren we speak through the spirit and power y'all by shamil shah we know just off of how the weather is when we look outside, we walk outside, we look up and how the sky is, you know, doing. We, we've we been saying this dude trying to block out the sun. And then, then videos come up. Videos come up and, it, and the spirit, the Holy Spirit that revealed that to us, we know it'd be on point. It'd be on point. So then you, you go and scroll through your phone, you find a video, it pops up. This guy is trying to block out the sun and he's trying to do it off of how he's researched how volcanoes when they erupt how they affect the sunlight this guy this guy explained a 5 year research plan was put in place to modify the earth climate and they based it off a, a volcano that erupted in 1816 and they they labeled that year the year without the summer because of a crazy volcano that erupt, erupt, uh, erupted so they're taking the same way that that volcano erupted and they're trying to block out the sun and they're doing it and it's that's the reason why people are sick they're jacked up they're you know what i'm saying they inner our energy levels are low it, it then this guy is this dude's a devil man i remember as a kid when i used to go outside at night i could see all the stars i remember as a kid it was everywhere but now when you go outside you can barely see the stars you have to go into a high you have to go where the city is not at. There's no light pollution. 
you know, the street lamps and all of that, then you'll be able to start seeing the sky, man. This dude is a devil. He's he's jacking the earth up, you know. This is Micah 2 and 1. It says, Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. And they covet fields and they take them by violence and houses and take them away. So they oppress a man in his house, even a man in his heritage. And that's Esau Edom, the separate claim white man. He's practicing wickedness in the earth because it's in the power of his hand. So we know you, you Edomites, you separate claim white people in your big multi-platinum companies. You're the devil, man. You're funding wickedness to destroy people. Let's go to the next thing here. And that's fine because it's only a short amount of time before the Lord finna finish this dude. All right. Let's see some more of the dude, this dude crafty wickedness getting caught. Potential of this. 54 boys and girls aged 11 to 18 were ushered in for what had been billed as a sex party. They were given candy and drinks and told to wait in this small room. This, this little living year boy, I remember, he asked one of my operatives if they could give him some cocaine or something. That they, he said, they usually give me something because I'm really scared. No, we have By the time the deal was done, the alleged traffickers were set to make $25,000. That transaction was never completed. 25 Colombian special operatives stormed the party. Arresting five suspects, four men, and one former beauty queen. All charged with child trafficking. The victims, 29 of whom are under 18, were evacuated, given medical exams, and placed in a rehabilitation center where specialists are working to undo the damage. Right before I got in the boat, we had to walk by the, this room where the kids were, and they put their hand up. And I touched their hand. And see that there's liberation now. Liberating one child at a time. 50 yeah, a child trafficking bus, and then you got Esau trying to act like he's he cares. That was a fake cry, man. Okay, so you see that these kids they got caught. Now, if I'm not if I heard correctly, I guess them kids was going to a sex party. Was they finna have an orgy? That's what it sound like. And then they thinking they finna go have an orgy, and they not even knowing that they're finna get they they were finna get sold. <laughs> see, see. It's like, oh my goodness, man. I, I, I hope my ears, I, I, I hope I'm not, I, I think I heard correctly. But nonetheless, man, this, this, this there's a new, new movie that came out where they're talking about child trafficking. I forget what the movie is called, man. The brothers were just talking about it, man. But um, just look out for a movie. Maybe it's a new movie. You could probably type it in like kidnapping or child trafficking movie 2023. It just came out, you know. But now the Heavenly Father is putting an exposure on how this Edomite is tra trafficking children. It's separate claim white man. This is Exodus 21 and 16. It says, And if he that stilleth a man and selleth him, if he be found in his hands, he should surely be put to death. So you Edomites, not only are you trafficking children around the world, but you have did that to the Israelites in the entirety. You stole us. And you trafficked us. You trafficked us. You made business of us. You know, the, the, the people of Israel, the Negro, Latino, Native Americans. And we built up your, your, your kingdom. And now we're found in your hand. We're still under your hand with your, with your birth certificates and social security cards, which are receipts of our purchase. That's why y'all bought your shop and destroy this damn Edomite, this dude, man. Now, check this last video out, man. These people, these people really think that they're going to be able to escape judgment. They really think that they're going to be able to just come up with some type of uh, scheme to prevail to moving into the future of 2080. <laughs> Check this out, man. 50 people have signed up to be the very first Australians hoping to take a trip to the future. A facility in a rural New South Wales town is the first in the Southern Hemisphere to freeze humans in the hope that future technology will bring them back to life. 
It's now in operation seven years after it received council approval. Holbrook, population less than 2,000, famous for its 90-metre submarine in the centre of town. But up the road, another structure is certain to put it on the map. I'm very excited that we're here. Southern Cryonics is now in operation, putting Australia one step closer to making sci-fi films a reality. The centre will freeze people in the hope that they can be brought back to life with future developments in medicine. After death, bodies will be put into these cooling chambers filled with liquid nitrogen at minus 190 degrees Celsius. They are then transferred into a vacuum-sealed cryostat. And they can stay in there for many, many years, hundreds of years, without almost any deterioration. 50 people have now signed up to be suspended with an age range of between 33 to 80. Ron Fielding from Goulburn had already signed up to the Cryonics Institute in the US. I just believe in life and I believe in science. I just think technology is terrific and it will happen. You might even go into a robot yourself and, and and then just preserve your brain. Southern Cryonics has plans to expand the facility's capacity as demand grows. The building itself can house at the moment 40 people, but the land is very large. And we think the land, if you just did it on flat land, would handle about 600. Being cryopreserved will cost you $150,000, which can be covered by life insurance and a subscription fee of $350 a year. So what does science say? There are frog species that can freeze and unfreeze. The frogs are very cool and there are plant species also that um, can survive some very low temperatures and some arctic fish as well. Um, So the difference between that is that these uh, species have evolved to survive cold temperatures. Human embryos for IVF and stem cells can be successfully frozen. Scientists say the difference is they're living. As for bringing back dead cells or entire bodies it was sort of beyond science for now New South Wales health considers <laughs> yeah these people are out of their minds okay out of them out of their minds so they want to freeze their bodies for future medicine 50 people have already volunteered to do it basically like the movie uh with, with Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, was it uh Ah, uh, what is it? Minority? No, no, not Minority Report. Uh, 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 uh. Man, I can't think of it, man. And it had uh, it had Wesley Snipes in it. I forget what it is. Total? Is it Total Recall? Maybe so. But um, that's what they that's what they're investing in. They're investing in this. So these this is a very prideful move too. How do you, how do they know that it won't ever be over over the years? There won't ever be like an electrical a fallout or anything of the sort that will shut down all the machines it's like it's so many different things once you die anyway your spirit go up to the heavenly father it don't matter what they do with the body your spirit go up to the heavenly father so how are they going to bring back the spirit down into the it's just so many different it's so many it's like let's go right here to psalms 2 and 1 it says why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing now we know that you know, we tie this to the New World Order, but I want to, even in this little small aspect, it's, this is vain. Why are you imagining this vain ass move? And then they base it off of how frogs can freeze themselves. They, they freeze in hibernation, then they come back, you know, in their set times. Well, the scriptures say all flesh is not the same flesh. We're not frogs. You see? It says the kings of the earth set themselves and rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying let us break their bands asunder and cast their cords from us he that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh and the Lord shall have them in derision so when the Lord just destroy you Edomites and your whole new world order and whatever the hell you think to do he gonna be laughing at you it says then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion so Yahweh Shai gonna come in 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 wreck wreck shot and look at this weirdo on the screen i paused it her eye was twitching as she was speaking because she just got demons in her i was people there like she got demons in her. look at her eye all twitching and she's spilling out her her wickedness but y'all was trying to come and put an end to all of it you know 
Look at her weak ass eyes, man. <laughs> But uh, yeah, man, hey, through the spirit and power, y'all about Shamal Shai, there's been another current events, prophecy, and madness. Um, Esau is the devil. Hope your brothers and sisters are edified out there. You keep keep staying strong, do what you do best in the Lord. And may the Lord come back sooner than later because this Edomite is just running rampant in wickedness. And he's coming, he's coming for everybody, you know. But the Lord is with us. Hey, y'all about Shamal Shai, Pakatham, Akim Step, Shalom.